today we'll be discussing on how to read and analyze a normal endocyanin uh, green angiography scan and some of the applied aspects. I am Dr. Parth Mehta, and the moderator for this session will be Dr. Muna Bendemadu. A brief introduction: Endocyanin green angiography is a highly specialized imaging technique used for imaging choroidal vasculature. It is a useful adjunct to traditional fundus fluorescein angiography in diagnosis of macular, choroidal, and outer retinal disorders. A uh, uh, few lines about the history. It was first developed by Kodak uh, Research Laboratories in 19 uh, and used in cardiology to measure cardiac output in 1957. The first intravenous ICGA to image the human choroid was in 1972 by Flower and Hockheimer. Yanuji and co-workers developed a 1024 line resolution system, which is a high resolution and a longer duration ICG. Uh, coming on to pharmacokinetics, it is a tricarbocyanin anionic dye. It is lipophilic and hydrophilic. It has a very short half life of 150 to 180 seconds. It is soluble in distilled water at a pH of 5 to 6.5. Uh, important things to note is that elimination takes place in the liver with secretion in bile. And about 98% of endocyanin green is bound to plasma proteins, uh, especially globulins like alpha 1 lipoproteins. Uh, coming on to optical properties, uh, maximum absorption as well as emission is in both in the infrared spectrum. Absorption takes place between 790 to 805 nanometers. Emission is between 825 to 835 nanometers. Uh, ICG fluorescence is only 4% of uh, fluorescein. It allows penetration through macular pigments, melanin and blood. Another point to note is that uh, it does not leak through fenestrations of choreocapillaries. Uh, the basic principle of ICG is similar to that of fundus fluorescein angiography. Uh, light passes through an excitation filter and the emitted uh, light is passed through a barrier filter and uh, visualization is done via the recording device. Uh, visualization system for an ICG can either be a digital fundus camera or a, a scanning laser ophthalmoscopic system. In digital fundus camera, source of light is a xenon light or a helium light, whereas in uh, scanning laser ophthalmoscopy, a monochromatic diode laser light is used. Uh, confocal scanning laser ophthalmoscopy gives better quality pictures as emitted light is passed through a pinhole. Uh, the SLO based camera has an added advantage of capturing about 12 frames per second, which makes video angiography recordings uh, better. Uh, Spectralis Heidelberg that is used in our uh, SN has a slit, uh, SLO based camera. Coming on to the actual procedure, uh, the pupils should be dilated and the dye is injected intravenously after test dose. Before the dye is injected, uh, red free or green free images are taken to uh, detect pseudofluorescence. The dose for uh, scanning laser ophthalmoscopy is 25 milligram in uh, 3 ml and 25 milligram in 5 ml for fundus camera. Uh, rapid sequential photographs about every one second are taken after dye injection. In mid phase, quadrants are reviewed with images taken at every two to three seconds. For the late phase study, images are taken at seven minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and 20 minutes, respectively. Uh, coming on to the phases of uh, ICGA, I'll describe the normal phases first. Uh, in the early phase, that is the first phase of ICGA, it uh, uh, takes place in less than one minute. The choroidal vessels are filled sequentially. There is hypofluorescence of the optic disc. There is poor perfusion of vertical zones adjacent to the disc, which are known as watershed zones. I'll tell you what those are. There is prominent filling of choroidal arteries, uh, early filling of choroidal veins, and gradual filling of retinal vasculature. So the first uh, choroidal vessels to be filled are the ones of the deeper Haller's layer, which is composed of large calibre non-fenestrated uh, vessels, as pointed out by the arrow here. Followed by filling of the intermediate Sattler's layer. As you can see, the caliber of the Sattler's layer vessels is smaller as compared to the Haller's layer, which are shown here in yellow. The Sattler's layers are shown here in green. The, the choreocapillaris is the last layer to be filled. Hence, the, important to note that the sequence of filling progresses from the biggest and the outermost to the smallest and the innermost vessels. I'll describe all the phases uh, of ICGA in a uh, patient. Uh, this is the right eye uh, early image of a patient. There is, uh, as you can see here, there is early filling of the choroidal arteries here, uh, seen more prominently on the nasal aspect as well as it can be seen uh, temporal to the disc. Uh, there is hypo with a relatively hypofluorescent background. If you can see closely, a cilioretinal artery has already started filling here, which you can see in the ICG image as well as in the fundus fluorescein angiography image. Uh, 
Uh, if we proceed one step further, now that ciliary retinal artery can be delineated very clearly. Uh, the early filling of choroidal veins has begun in the periphery. These are the large terrible choroidal veins that can be seen along with the early filled choroidal arteries that were seen. Uh, in the next uh, segment, uh, as you can see, the choroidal veins are more delineated better in this image. Dye has just entered the retinal circulation, which can be seen here in the corresponding FFA image as well. Uh, watershed zone cannot be demarcated in this case, but generally appears as a hypofluorescent area adjacent to the disc, which is seen in the early phases. It represents the area uh, between the supply of each posterior ciliary artery. You want to go back to showing the watershed zone better, part Maybe since this is a basic class, I think we can take a little time on the image. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I think the, I don't know whether. I just realized uh, if you see on the fluorescein angiogram itself, you see that ciliary retinal artery has filled first, whereas the rest of the vessels haven't filled yet. So yes. for postgraduates, uh, when you see nothing else that has filled except one vessel near the optic disc, it indicates that this is filling from the choroidal circulation and this is ciliary retinal artery that's not present in everyone. Okay, it has uh, varying levels of significance. I'm sure you all can go back and read. And uh, this phenomenon of watershed zone is something that you're likely to be asked in your exams as to why this watersh watershed zone appears. So please uh, make sure you all read about it. And also the differences between appearance of the choroidal arteries versus the choroidal veins. We all are very comfortable with uh, differentiating between retinal vessels, the retinal arteries and retinal veins. But uh, choroidal artery and choroidal vein, not many of us are comfortable differentiating. Maybe Parth can repeat it for the benefit of everyone. Uh, sure, ma'am. So How to identify a choroidal artery versus a choroidal vein? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, with respect to the caliber, uh, ma'am, one can differentiate uh, uh, the choroidal artery. Choroidal arteries are small uh, caliber and choroidal veins would be larger in caliber and they'll be seen uh, much before the filling of the retinal vasculature. Uh, why does this watershed zone appear blurry as the, as the phases progress? Any of the fellows who is present? Why does this watershed zone start getting blurring even in a normal <laughs> ICG angiography, why does this blur blur out later? One of the fellows tell me, who's posted diagnostics this month? Hello, yes ma'am, Shobit here. Yeah, Shobit, why does the watershed zone blur out in the later phases of the ICG angiography? Be um, not sure ma'am, is it ma'am because of analysis of zin? Is it because of the uh, cir circulation, because of that analysis of zin is uh, located in the para? I'm what is sure. the order of filling of the vessels in the choroid? Uh, Ma'am, uh, that uh, short posterior circular, uh, uh, short posterior uh, choroid that uh, ciliary circulation supplies. So first of all, outer outermost uh, hallus layer is supplied. After that, uh, then uh, atlas layer, and after that, choroid capillaries. Okay. So why do you get learning? You want to proceed, path? Uh, as one can see in this slide, uh, the dye flow has started in the retinal arteries as well. As you can see here, these are the retinal arteries and the corresponding uh, can be seen on the FFA image as well. Uh, one can see very early laminar flow which is started in the retinal veins here. The laminar flow can be seen more distinctly in uh, this slide. This slide shows uh, a laminar filling of the retinal veins. The retinal circulation filling is now complete uh, with filling of the retinal veins noted. This can be seen in the corresponding FFA image as well. Uh, coming on to the second phase of the ICJ, it is the early mid phase. This phase lasts about one to three minutes. It shows greater prominence of choroidal veins as well as retinal vessels. As you can see here, uh, the choroidal veins are these large caliber veins that can be seen against the background of the retinal vessel. This is the retinal vein here. These are the retinal arteries that are small caribal vessels here. And this is the small, smallest uh, choreo capillaries that is seen. And these are the choroidal arteries that are seen. We know this is a normal ICG angiogram, right? Right. Yeah. Now, why does it behave like this? You see the normal FFA on the other side. You see all the vessels filling okay. There's no leakiness. 
but you still call this leaky appearance on the right side the normal ICG. Why? I think maybe uh, the indistinct nature uh, is because of uh, the perfusion in the choreo capillaries, and that's probably Why because the indistinct? yeah because uh, the uh, diameter. Uh, I mean the. Camera cannot capture uh, that fine resolution, so it, it shows it shows as an indistinct haze uh, when the choreo capillaries get filled up. Yeah, excellent. So basically, what you see is not because the choreo capillaries is leaking the ICG dye. You're seeing it because the caliber is so small, the camera cannot identify individual choreo capillaries. Okay, so this is not leakiness, it's basically dye filling in the choreo capillaries. And that is what is masking actual watershed. Yeah, proceed. Yes, sir. Uh, in the uh, early mid phase, uh, the quadrant examination is done. Uh, the dye is, uh, uh, all the different quadrants are examined to see any pathology. Uh, here you can see a uh, filling of the vortex vein here in periphery in this case. Uh, in the late mid phase which lasts from 3 to 15 minutes, there is a gradual fading of the choroidal vessels but the retinal vessels are still visible. There is diffuse hyperfluorescence from the cap choreo capillaries and there is diffuse tissue staining. Uh, there is, as you can see here, there is relative fading of the choroidal vessels. All the choroidal vessels which were seen prominently in the previous uh, phases have now uh, gradually uh, uh, toned down. Uh, the retinal vessels though are still prominent, the retinal veins can be seen as along with the retinal arteries. There is diffuse tissue staining that can be seen throughout and there is diffuse hyperfluorescence from the choreo capillaries. Coming to the late phase of ICG, which lasts anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes, uh, there is uh, marked hypofluorescence of the choroidal vessels and discs, background of hypofluorescence from staining of the extrachoroidal tissues, lack of visibility of retinal vessels as well, choroidal vortex veins can be visible in this phase. As you can see here, the late phase of the ICG angiogram demonstrates the hypofluorescent optic disc and silhouetting of the larger, relatively hypofluorescent choroidal vessels. As you can see, all this is a silhouette that is formed against the background uh, fluorescence. This happens because of the staining of the extrachoroidal space. Can you just stop here? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Just a small question for anyone with other investigation, if normal or abnormal shows hypofluorescence of the optic disc. Which other investigation? Yes, or autofluorescence. Somebody other than Ronak next time. Okay. Thanks, Sashwanti. Yeah, so the way you identify is it an FFA or an ICG because sometimes people tend to get confused because they don't realize fluorescein fills the retinal artery or ICG fills the retinal arteries as well. Hypofluorescence of the disc is what is very typical of an ICG angiogram and also a fundus autofluorescence image. So if you are not sure what you are identifying, please just look at the optic disc and you will be able to tell it. Okay? Yeah, proceed. Uh, so which are the conditions in which one would like to do an ICG scan? Uh, choroidal diseases like uh, polypolyp choroidal vasculopathy, retinal angiomatous uh, proliferation, uh, choroidal neovascular membrane, uh, central serous choreoretinopathy, and other diseases of the pachychoroid spectrum. ICG is of particular use in cases of choroidal tumors like choroidal hemangioma and choroidal melanoma. Uh, inflammatory choroidal disorders and white dot syndromes can also be diagnosed and differentiated based on ICGA patterns. And therapeutic uses of ICG include ICG guided laser photocoagulation for feeder vessels and ICG guided transpupillary thermotherapy for choroidal hemangioma. Uh, coming to the interpretation of ICGA scans, uh, in fundus fluorescein angiography, we use the term fluorescence, whereas in ICGA, the term cyanescence is used. However, these terms are used interchangeably. Just like in FFA, the causes for hypofluorescence can be because of block fluorescence due to uh, blood or pigments, or it can be due to filling defect, due to loss of choroidal vascular, vascular tissue or any infarct. Hyperfluorescence uh, can be uh, because of uh, window defect due to loss of uh, retinal pigment epithelium due to either pooling of dye, leakage of dye, or due to staining of tissues. Although ICG is a dynamic scan and requires a complete interpretation of all phases to reach a diagnosis, certain conditions show characteristic features in certain phases. 
so in an early phase of uh, endocyanin green angiography uh, it can be useful in the uh, uh, in diagnosis of vascular disorders like uh, central lateral artery occlusion and venous occlusion especially in cases of vasculitic etiologies like giant cell arthritis which are often accompanied by choroidal hyper hypoperfusion tumors like choroidal hemangioma uh, show marked hyperfluorescence in the early phase uh, an abnormal vascular network in cases of cnvm or associated with the polyp can be seen in an early phase a retinal pigment epithelium tear uh, shows hypofluorescence in cases with rolled out of a uh, rp I'll give an example of a uh, circumscribed choroidal hemangioma. This is an obtuse white field image of the right eye showing a well-defined circumscribed lesion located inferior nasal to the disc. The nasal disc margins are obscured, and along with it, an inferior exudative retinal detachment can be seen. So, as you can see, ICG shows a characteristic brilliant hyperfluorescence in the early phases with this lacy intrinsic network of vessels. seen uh, of the tumor and uh, as the phase increases the uh, in late, later phases as you can see there is a washout of the dye so one more example i'll give of a choroidal hemangioma as you can see in the early phases uh, the uh, there is prominent filling and hyperfluorescence of the lesion near see nasal to the disc and on subsequent uh, slide and imaging uh, there is relative washout that can be seen of the uh, of the tumor and the vessels and of the dye from the uh, vessels uh another uh, 36 year uh, coming on to an abnormal vascular network a 36 year old man with history of diminution of vision in the left eye he was given an anti vegic injection elsewhere uh, presented with a uh, fundus photo this fundus photo shows a uh, subretinal heme with uh, subretinal fluid and an inferior bare area of retinal pigment epithelium uh an icg was done in this uh, case uh which shows this area of uh, abnormal vasculature that can be seen it it, bega it begins in the early phase which can be seen more prominently as long as the phases increase and uh, just adjacent to that is an area of a pigment epithelial detachment which appears as hyper hypofluorescent as one proceeds to the subsequent phases one can see the uh, uh, way in which icg highlights the abnormal vascular network better as compared to what can be seen on a fundus fluorescein angiography coming to the mid and late phase uh, 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 particular importance are hot spots and plaques uh, in cases of cnvm hot spots are uh, less than 1 disc diameter uh, they are uh, uh, active lesions uh, plaques are more than 1 disc diameter they uh, represent areas of uh, lesser leakage Uh, coming on to a retinal angiomatous proliferation or a type 3 uh, cnvm it has characteristic findings on icga i think you go uh, part part can you go back to that slide yes ma'am no yes because i i think no no not this one yes because i think uh, post graduates are maybe expected to know this so i think uh, just go through this a little bit in detail Okay, and also in CSCR, you are able to identify the leak. So, contrary to what one expects, in CSCR also you can see the smokestack leaks, because yes. we know CSCR is now a choroidal vascular abnormal, not confined to the retina. So, if you see a smokestack leak on ICG, don't think it's anything odd. The same smokestack leak on FFA will also be seen on ICG. Okay, so I just graduates. on uh, ic program i think this is an important slide that uh, you need to pay attention to yeah please proceed yes uh coming on to uh, retinal angiomatous proliferation also known as known as type 3 cnvm it has some characteristic findings on icga it shows hot spots these hot spots are seen in either mid or late frames which may be associated with the pigment epithelial detachment and cystoid macular edema a uh, hairpin loops as you can see here this shows the feeding arteriole and the draining venule and there is a hairpin loop like bend that can be seen here so why is it important to do an icga in cases of rap uh, uh, to differentiate between an occult cnvm and a rap occult cnvm occurs at the edges of the pigment epithelial detachment whereas a rap occurs within the area of the pigment epithelial detachment also a uh, rap is more aggressive and less responsive to treatment and it may require a multimodal approach for management a 43 year old diabetic and a hypertensive gentleman with history of on and off diminution of vision since 8 years with a history of focal laser done elsewhere 3 years back 
a uh, clinical picture shows uh, subretinal fluid at the posterior pole along with yellow precipitates as you can see here with some sort of focal laser cra marks that can be seen temporal to the fovea here uh, inferior hard exudates are seen uh fundus autofluorescence in this case uh, shows a mixed pattern of uh, autofluorescence there are two distinct areas of hyper autofluorescence here as this is the first and this is the second and a few areas of hypo autofluorescence uh subsequent ffa and icc imaging this is the ffa image of the same patient as you can see to this area of the previously lasered pyroretinal atrophy you can see that the uh, leakage has been started which is gradually increasing in intensity as the phases increase corresponding to the icga the intensity of the leak is less as compared to that as we can see on the ffa but the area of choroidal hyperpermeability can be appreciated much better in a icga again proceeding on proceeding on to the further image as you can see the leak has become uh, increasing in size as well as in intensity and uh, this is probably the area where uh, there is choroidal hyperpermeability and if you look at the corresponding icg you see that same leak but more well defined okay so this what i meant by saying you can see icg uh, ffa leaks even on icg uh, in csr Yeah, proceed. Yeah, so an OCT radial scan through the lesion shows multiple uh, pockets of uh, subretinal fluid along with uh, schizes and RP irregularities that can be seen. A 71-year-old female with uh, history of hypertension and heart disease with a dull foveal reflex, and you can see uh, a lesion with uh, a surrounding heme. This lesion appears clinically like a retinal artery macroaneurysm. a uh, fundus fluorescein angiography and an icga was done for this patient which shows uh, filling up in the initial phases which subsequently uh, fills up much better in the later phases so importance of icga in uh, ram is that if there is significant hemorrhage present then ram dele uh, then delineation of ram is better by icga because it penetrates through the hemorrhage because the dye uh, is absorbed better in the infrared spectrum coming to the late uh, phase or the washout phase uh, things to look out for in late phase is in cases of polypodal choroidal vasculopathy is icg washout phenomenon uh, there it can be reversal of the polyp uh, in the early phases the polyp appears hyperfluorescent with a hypo hypofluorescent margin but in late phase there may be reversal so there may be hyperfluorescent margins and the polyp itself may appear hypofluorescent in cases of choroidal melanoma there can be late hyperfluorescence and the distinct dual circulation can also be demonstrated in the late phases as i showed earlier there is a distinct washout that is seen in cases of choroidal hemangioma uh, inflammatory disorders uh, choroidal inflammatory disorders show persisting spots of hypofluorescence in uh, in cases of bkh uh, multiple evanescent white dot syndrome and serpiginous choroiditis yeah uh why do you think this happens i noticed some of our uh, uvia colleagues are in the meeting so uh, why does this persistent spot of hypofluorescence occur uh, in the uh, ma'am because they represent the uh, areas of active inflammation that uh, are happening at that uh, particular uh, in that particular disease ma'am what is that area what is that called uh yeah the uvia people always talking about HDDs, ma'am. These are believed to be choroidal granulomas, or sometimes certain people consider them as uh, flow deficits or areas of ischemia. So that is why they persist. Okay. Choroidal well, granuloma are very yes, well. Yes, sir. In the sir, ICG. please tell us. Very high, well delineated in VKH ICG is a very good to detect the choroidal granuloma. It helps in the diagnosis. Thank you, sir. Part two. Would you like to proceed? Yes, ma'am. So this is a 73-year-old uh, male with gradual diminution of vision in the right eye. Uh, here, as we can see, there is a large area of RP alteration which are centered at the fovea and which are extending nasally as well. The early phase of the ICGA can show a distinct network of vessels within the choroid. As you can see here, there is a lacy pattern which gets uh, delineated better in the late uh, phases. Also, a well-defined uh, hot plaque-like uh, polyp uh, with a focal stain and a surrounding area of hypofluorescence can be seen uh, in the latter stages. If uh, an OCT uh, image through the lesion shows uh, RP alterations with elevated uh, contour uh, of the pigment epithelial detachment, 
and a thumb like a PED. What are the advantages of uh, ICGS scan over fundus chlorinacy in angiography? There is better visualization of the choroidal vasculature as there is no masking by RPE. It penetrates ocular pigments like melanin, xanthophyll, exudates fluids as well as blood. It can be used in hazy media uh, with the phenomenon of Rayleigh scatter. It can be imaged even in the presence of considerable blood, the phenomenon of me or forward scatter. Uh, it is better tolerated in photophobic patients. Uh, Extravasation causes minimal or no reaction. 90% of the dye is bound to proteins, hence it remains and delineates the choroidal vessels better. It accurately delineates the size of an occult CNVM. Peak absorption of ICG coincides with the emission spectrum of diode laser, which allows selective ablation of chorioretinal lesions. Uh, though uh, indocyanin green dye is relatively safer than fluorescein, but adverse reactions have been reported in literature. They can be classified as mild, moderate, or severe. Mild being nausea, vomiting, extravasation, and pruritus. Moderate being urticaria, pyrexia, and local tissue necrosis. And severe involving the respiratory and the cardiovascular system, as well as death. What are the contraindications to ICG imaging? Patient with iodine or shellfish allergy, uh, you should uh, uh, preferably avoid doing an ICG scan. In such patients, infracyanine dye can be used. Also, because of the iodine part of it, in cases of hyperthyroidism, you should avoid. Because the excretion is via the hepatic route, in hepatic insufficiency, it is relatively contraindicated. And in pregnancy, it falls into category C of drugs. What are the therapeutic uses of uh, ICGA? Uh, Indocyanin green guided photodynamic therapy for treatment of a polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. Indocyanin uh, green guided transpupillary thermotherapy for choroidal hemangioma as well as retinoblastomas. Indocyanin green angiography guided laser photocoagulation in eyes with CNVM. Uh, and with vertiporfin to treat the areas of choroidal hyperpermeability in cases of chronic CSCR. What are the limitations of an ICGA scan? Uh, the chorio capillaries cannot be imaged separately with ICGA since the average cross sectional diameter is much smaller than that of the feeding and the draining vessels. Hence, fluorescence of the former cannot be differentiated from that from the latter. Uh, phenomenon of me scatter also masks the unfilled retinal vessels, which cannot be visualized well in low speed angiography systems. Bright areas do not necessarily signify dye leakage due to phenomenon of additive fluorescence. It is poorer in FFA in imaging of classic CNVM since early hyperfluorescence of CNVM is overwhelmed by the intense background choroidal filling. Although superior to FFA in imaging of occult CNVM, it may sometimes underestimate the size of a occult CNVM. What about the recent advantage, uh, advances in ICGA? So uh, wide angle angiography or ultra wide field that can be done with uh, a field of view of 160 degrees with contact lenses as well as uh, without contact lenses such as Optos ICG which gives a field of view of about 200 degrees. It uh, helps in real time imaging of a wide field of choroidal circulation. Overlay technique allows uh, lesion of one image to be traced onto another color or red free image. Digital subtraction ICGA uh, uh, uses sequentially acquired ICG images along with pseudo color imaging. This helps in delineating occult CNVM better than the conventional ICGM. So uh, I'm coming on to one example of an Optos uh, ICG. As you can see here, to, uh, to illustrate the differential choroidal filling and the different phases, as we described in a normal ICG earlier, you can see the filling of the choroidal arteries here that can be seen uh, uh, as the smaller caliber vessels here. You can see the watershed zone but that can be seen, which I was speaking about in the earlier slides. In the subsequent slides, you can see the filling of the choroidal veins. These are the large caribal choroidal veins that are filled and early filling of the choroidal arteries has been started in this phase. As you can see, the dye has now prominently entered the retinal vasculature as well. And uh, in the subsequent slides, you can see a vortex vein that can be seen here. Why are we emphasizing so much on this uh, Optos uh, uh, white field imaging? Because researchers around the world have been using this to study choroidal vasculature and circulation. Bachi and all concluded that in eyes with pachychoroid disease, imbalanced choroidal venous drainage with congestion of specific vortex vein systems may contribute to a state of choroidal venous insufficiency, which is characterized by local choroidal thickness as well as choroidal hyperpermeability. Uh, Verma et al. used ultra wide field ICG to define the extent and variability of peripheral choroidal circulation in normal eyes which could be of relevance in uh, studying ischemic choroidopathies better as well as using a suprachoroidal mode of delivery for drug therapy. Moriyama et al. investigated the characteristics and draining of uh, posterior vortex veins 
and their relationship uh, to staphylomas in uh, cases of high myopia. So to conclude, uh, ICG is a diagnostic investigation used use for choroidal vasculature and choroidal pathologies. Advent of high speed and wide field imaging systems, uh, they uh, help in our current inter interpretation and understanding of ICG and choroidal disorders and always to use ICG as an ancillary investigation with fundus fluorescein angiography. Uh, these are my acknowledgements. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pat. Uh, very nice uh, presentation. He's put a lot of effort in collecting the abnormal ICG angiograms. Uh, but I think it's very important for all of you not only to know what a normal ICG angiogram is, but how it is done. So I think this month, uh, Shobit, were you in uh, diagnostics this month or you next month? No, no, this month, this month I was in diagnostics. Yes, so tell me how an ICG angiogram is done when we do FFA ICG. How do we inject it? Two separate syringes, one syringe, both together, mixed, consent, uh, consecutively, how do we do it? And for, first of all, we have to uh, like uh, the take the normal, the fundus for images are taken. No, 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 no. I'm not asking that. That we know. But when we, how do we inject the dye when we do a FFA and ICG? How is the dye injected? In one syringe, in two syringes, to one IV line, two IV lines mixed together. How do we do it? Who was there last month? Who was there last month? Uh, Ma'am Prerna here. Yeah, Prerna, tell me. Uh, Ma'am, we mix 2.5 ml of each and give in one syringe only. So you give it in one syringe. Excellent. So when you're posted in diagnostics, you all are expected to be there while these tests are done so that you know how it is done because once you go out you may not have a talented bunch of photographers to support you so you need to know how these are done okay anyone any of the other consultants have any uh, comments jb here yes sir please so i use icg where there is a doubt about the macular foveal involvement so ICG picks up the extent of the lesion much better in the uh, choroiditis, which is close to fovea than FFA. Yes, sir. That is why, because uh, the foveal pigments cannot, uh, uh, what do you call it, mask the ICG dye. And that's why you can't see the FAZ in ICG. So, especially in the fovea, you can see it much better, choroidal lesions. Yeah. Which reminds me that. Uh, in the older days when we used to do TTT for uh, uh, choroidal neovascular membranes, we would always avoid doing TTT on the same day as the ICG because you want subthreshold reaction in those eyes. You don't want enhanced reaction when you're treating a subfoveal choroidal neovascular membrane with 66 or 69 vision. So when we were doing FA, PDT or TTT for a patient who has undergone ICG, we would wait a minimum of 24 hours before doing the procedure because we don't want enhancement of the effect which can cause RP atrophy. So this is something you need to know. You may want enhanced effect, but certain times you don't want enhanced effect. So time your treatment accordingly. Thank you, Bart, for a nice presentation and all the effort you took to make it uh, good. Thank you, ma'am.